Beyond the promenades, beaches and colourful ports, deep on the seabed and ocean floor, rest unexploited treasures, fossil and mineral resources like oil, gas and methane hydrate, as well as manganese, nickel, cobalt and copper, unknown life forms and microorganisms which are of particular interest to the pharmaceutical and cosmetic industries. Who owns all this? The coastal state exercises over the continental shelf sovereign rights for the purpose of exploring it and exploiting its natural resources. Beyond the continental shelf, there is the area. The area and its resources are the common heritage of mankind. According to a special legal regime, no claim or exercise of sovereignty or sovereign rights nor appropriation will be recognized. So far, the mineral resources of the deep sea were only explored by marine scientific research. Today, the exploitation of such resources is increasingly in the focus. The exploitation is still complex and costly. The required technologies are predominantly still under development and in the hands of just a few industrialized states. The race for such resources has started. Is it only a question on who is winning this race for the mineral resources of the seabed and ocean floor and subsoil thereof beyond the limits of national jurisdiction? May only a few benefit from the common heritage of mankind? The United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea provides a special legal regime for activities in the area in order to prevent a technological race and to guarantee the interests and needs of developing states. Right now, the International Seabed Authority in Kingston, Jamaica is working on the so-called Mining Code, which will deal primarily with the exploitation of the resources of the area. A seabed disputes chamber at the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea in Hamburg was established to settle disputes and to give advisory opinions. Today also, marine microorganisms are of special economic importance, particularly for the pharmaceutical and cosmetic industries. At the time of the negotiations and adoption of UNCLOS, marine microorganisms were not really in the focus of the international community. This will be changed in the future through an internationally legally binding instrument. Intellectual property is also an issue which should be dealt with in the new international legally binding instrument under UNCLOS. The patenting of inventions based on genetic resources which derive from the area might be in conflict with the idea of the common heritage of mankind and may affect the duty to carry out activities in the area for the benefit of mankind as a whole. The World Intellectual Property Organization WIPO deals already with issues concerning the interplay between intellectual property and genetic resources for quite some time. Hence, a constructive dialogue, particularly between the WIPO and the Preparatory Committee for the development of an international legally binding instrument under UNCLOS, would be very helpful. The seas and oceans hide tremendous treasures. To discover, to explore and to exploit them in a sustainable manner is a right but also a duty of all states. UNCLOS provides a legal framework for balancing the general obligation of states to protect and preserve the marine environment and the sovereign right of states to exploit their natural resources.